that escalated rather quickly. <laughs> uh, give it a few more days, more people will have seen my Autodesk University summary video than were actually there at Autodesk University walking through the expo floor. Uh, and I know how much the sponsors pay to be seen by that many people, so I, sponsors, hey, hit me up in the DMs, I'll give you a good discount. Uh, so look, right, when I released that video, I, I had no idea the impact it would end up having, but it, it did end up ripping through Autodesk, through to the absolute highest level. Uh, but I've done multiple AU videos in the past, right, singing its praises, even explaining what it is, and strongly encouraging people to go and look at how those performed after three years. So I, I just didn't expect that, but uh, let's just say there's been a number of developments since AU, some of which can't really talk about some that I can, but ultimately, regardless of how appropriately or not I delivered the message in that last video, what was undeniable is that it struck a chord and resonated with a significant number of people who actually attended AU. Uh, Andrew reached out to me direct in the following days. Hi, Andrew. I know you'll be watching this one as well. Um, loud and clear, Andrew. Uh, and off the record does mean off the record. I always respect none of that. But needless to say, whether or not I had anything to do with it or not, the message was ultimately received loud and clear by Autodesk. Uh, by now, they're going to have had hundreds, if not thousands, worth of survey feedback forms sent in from the attendees that decided to fill it in. Uh, and I've no doubt that, you know, the people who, who were doing that, the public broadcasts that were coming out of AU, right? When I said they were keeping them professional and upbeat, I reckon a lot of those people would have had something very different to say over a faceless safety net of an online survey form. Uh, and by now, the majority of that feedback will have been reconciled and weighted by Autodesk. And ultimately, what we got yesterday from the Chief Operating Officer, the COO, not the CEO, it's very much likely intentional that this apology didn't come from the CEO, but we got an actual apology from Autodesk for how the event unfolded. And you've got to respect them for that doesn't change what happened, what happened happened, but it's a significant gesture bearing in mind. This message, this apology would have went out to all their biggest clients and it's not easy to accept and acknowledge responsibility for something like this, especially when you're a publicly traded company of that size. So this is the statement that went out yesterday from the COO reading verbatim. I want to personally thank you for attending Autodesk University in New Orleans this year. I found it hugely valuable to be back together in person, meeting with customers and partners and hearing about your experiences with Autodesk. Through those conversations, it became apparent that the Autodesk University experience fell short of expectations this year. Many of you encountered problems with the venue and food services and had concerns about personal safety and security in the city. It's clear that the event did not meet our own high standards on several fronts, and for that, I apologize. Our focus now is to ensure that next year's conference is a return to the kind of experience we've historically delivered. To make sure we tackle all the issues surrounding this year's event and preserve the best of AU, we would like your feedback. I'd be grateful if you could complete the short survey below, which looks at the time you spent both on-site and off-site at Autodesk University 2022. I talked in the general session on day two of the conference about the importance of customer feedback in my role as the Chief Operating Officer in improving our customers' experiences. And that includes events like Autodesk University. We're listening to your feedback as it will prove invaluable in helping us shape next year's AU into something special. Many thanks for your continued partnership with Autodesk. Well, personally, my feedback is at this point well documented here. Yeah, um, I, I don't need to provide any more, but it does kind of feel like a lot of what I said was etched into that statement, especially around working towards bringing back the experience that we've come to expect. I'm not gonna take any credit for that or claim, make any claims, but a lot of the points I touched on were in there. So uh, there's no merit to me repeating what I said in the first video, right? It's out there, you can go check that out. And I'm not going to double down on things that I've already raised. Autodesk have apologized, they've owned it. And for me, the best course of action now is to work towards making the next event an AU that we can both look forward to, but also remember for all the good reasons. So I'll try and provide some context, some additional context around some of the problems and put my hat in the ring for things that I'd personally like to see improved in the future. First off, it is true that New Orleans actually deteriorated quite significantly in the months leading up to AU. I'm not sure if it ever had demolition man San Angeles levels of law and order, uh, but Autodesk likely signed the contract with the New Orleans Convention Center uh, probably before COVID even happened. So for the place to then descend into further chaos this year, by that point, 
right? The, sh the shit was out the horse and it kind of had to go ahead and happen. But I feel like the communication around that, especially for foreign visitors who just obviously aren't aware of any of this, right? They, they don't get localized US news stories. Could have and probably should have been broadcast more clearly. To their credit, they did provide guidance through a conference guide email prior to the event, but may, look, whether this is just me or not, I don't know, but by this point in time, I'm so used to hearing this kind of verbiage being used, even if it's not even a problem, right? Disclaimers and warnings are often just arbitrarily thrown around, whether they're applicable or not, just to avoid any litigation and basically cover backsides because, you know, just in case. So again, to their credit, they did advise, but I felt like the, the context should have been provided along with uh, emphasizing more strongly just, I don't know, just something better than it being the last few bullet points in a long email that most people probably wouldn't have read. But trying to be pragmatic about this for next year, if there is another year on the contract to be had at New Orleans, you can kind of see that Autodesk are damned if they do and they're damned if they don't, right? Because conventions are planned years in advance. So finding another available venue is borderline impossible at this short notice. And if they do decide to just not host it again in New Orleans, even though they're contractually obliged to, and cite safety concerns, that could be taken as disrespecting the city and become a bit of a PR nightmare. But on the other hand, sending thousands of people back there knowing what has already happened and what the general feeling was about it, or at least asking them to go back there, right? That's also gonna be a bit of a PR nightmare because at an individual level, most people have already decided that they're not gonna go back if it's gonna be in New Orleans again. They could cite substandard service from the convention center, failure to properly accommodate the numbers and deliver on expectations as a reason for not going back to New Orleans, but that's for the legal teams and the sea levels to process and hash out. The thing is you can see that the Sands Expo in Vegas already has bookings into September and early October next year because these things are booked up in advance. So for me personally, I'd infinitely prefer more to see AU just go virtual next year if an alternative venue can't be found, right? Because as the saying goes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I can't see many people wanting to go back there regardless of any future reassurances. Now, again, if it's true what I said in the last video about Vegas being potentially ditched due to brand alignment issues, amongst other reasons, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I'm not C-level in Autodesk. I don't see what they see, but mate, CES is still held there. It's the biggest consumer electronics show in the world. Uh, looking at the Sands Expo calendar, they've got some pretty respectable conventions booked in for next year. So, you know, so it doesn't seem to bother too many others, but again, that's looking at a very small piece of the picture. Uh, so I don't know, the venue just, that, that venue just worked. But again, that's just my take and there'll be a lot that I'm not party to. So for me, that's the venue and that encompasses a lot of the additional issues from last month, right? The walking, the hotels, the disbursement of classes, the food, the cheap entertainment. So if you fix the venue, you're addressing a lot of the other issues that we had. Except one more, the quality of the classes. Now, I touched on this in my previous video about how a large proportion of classes this year were just substandard to say the least. So here's my take on that. First of all, Autodesk, come down hard on classes being used as a sales pitch. Because from what I've heard, there was a lot of that going on this year. Attendees do not pay thousands, take time out from work, away from their families, come and listen to a sales pitch and be advertised to in a session where they're supposed to be learning. I know some people are just taking advantage of that and it doesn't go unnoticed. You've got your sponsored classes already there, held by event sponsors. I know that because I did one, but they're clearly advertised, some, some more so than others, but they're advertised as just that. And even mine wasn't a shameless sales pitch. It was a live demonstration, a product hands-on demonstration using real world use cases to showcase how the sponsor's technology can then tangibly benefit Autodesk customers. So I, I don't know, a better curation and auditing of classes is probably needed with, I, I don't know how easy it would be to enforce this, but meaning, meaningful consequences if a company just crosses the line and decides to disregard that notice and deliver a sales pitch anyway. Also, <laughs> right, with this one, I very much doubt everyone is gonna agree with me on this one, but it's just a suggestion. Feedback to me was that a lot of classes were missing any real substance, or meaningful value. Too much PowerPoint, too much waffling, and individual grandstanding. So in my opinion, uh, <laughs> limit it so that a speaker can only deliver one class at the event, one class per speaker. Some speakers have been known to previously host three or more classes over a single AU. And look, I'm sorry, but hot take incoming. In my opinion, it's near impossible to dedicate a reasonable enough amount of prep time into each class to ensure it's gonna be valuable and substantial enough to make it worthwhile for attendees 
if you've got, I don't know, three of them to put together before AU. Everyone's different, I get that. Some people may have otherworldly levels of productivity and preparation and can actually achieve this, but using myself as the benchmark and as an example here, when I host a class at AU, I know the attendees have given me a significant percentage of their time at an event that they've paid a fortune to be at, and they've got high expectations. So take my class in 2018, for example, I lost, I lost count it, over the course of three months, how many hours and days I put into that, poured my soul into that class over a few months. This year, my class was only agreed. It only happened early September, long after all the other speakers had finished up. And I, what I did, I shut down this YouTube channel. I shut down all my work, everything else. And I spent a full solid two weeks working day and night to pull that class together. The thought of having more than one class to do for me is inconceivable. I, I just know I couldn't put that kind of time and effort into two or more classes. It would destroy me. Now, of course, I can't expect everyone else to agonize over a class as much as I do, but I still feel strongly that if each speaker was limited to just one class per AU, they'd likely have little or reduced excuses for not giving that class their full time and attention. Plus it gives others an opportunity as well to host a class who might actually put that kind of effort in. In addition to that, uh, and this one's kind of on Autodesk, I suppose, but better scheduling is needed. We have far too many classes this year overlapping with similar industry classes which caused frustration for attendees who would have wanted to attend both classes on at the same time or more. Uh, but look, I, I get it, right? Attendees can only attend around four or five classes each day because that's how the time slots work. And you've got several hundreds of classes on the roster, but I don't know, there has to be a better way. Whether that's reducing the number of similar subject classes and making the rooms bigger for the classes you do have, don't know or add a fourth day to AU and spread them out better, don't know. But for the love of God, don't schedule classes during the main keynotes. That would be a good start. So I think I'll I don't think I'll leave it there. I don't wanna ramble on for, for ages. I, I, I would imagine Autodesk know at this point what they've got to do given the history of AU and what went wrong in this one. It's, but it's a huge positive that Autodesk listened. They owned the situation and apologized. For me personally, as someone who sacrificed an awful lot to go out and be there, that's, Enough for me, obviously providing that moving forwards, we get back to what AU is fundamentally all about, which is different for different people. But for me, it's indulging in a love for Autodesk and the surrounding ecosystem of partners, networking with new and old faces, and of course, providing a safe and enjoyable environment for learning, even if that will mean skipping just one more physical event and it goes virtual next year. So there you go. So as it wasn't another rant, but credit where credit's due. Thanks for watching. My name's Neil Cross, this is Tech3D. I'll see you in the next one. Doodles. <laughs>